The SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry, founded in 1911, is now the only institution of higher learning in the United States dedicated solely to the study of natural resources and the environment. Hello and welcome to this edition of Improve Your World with SUNY ESF. I'm your host Don Torrance and today we're going to talk about art and its impact on our discussions about our environment, how we perceive environmental problems and how we come to reach decisions about solving those problems. This long closed gas station became a focal point of the debate over our use of oil, especially the U.S. dependence on foreign oil, because sculptor Jennifer Marsh wanted to create something different a gas station wrapped entirely in panels of fabric, like a giant quilt. Well, I developed the International Fiber Collaborative as a way or a means to reach out and connect with people. And that's the utmost importance, and to create a forum. And in this case, we created a forum talking about oil dependency, uh, dependency on foreign oil. Uh, some people talk about global warming and different environmental issues that uh, we all can relate to and that all directly affects our everyday lives. Kind of the reason, I guess, is I felt that I was already interested in the fiber arts and fibers everybody can relate to. We all have a grandma or a mom or sister that quilts or crochets and it's a part of our culture and our history. Um, and then pairing that along with social issues and economical and uh, political issues, something that we all can relate to as well. Um, this gas station happens to be a central focal, focus point to this area. Everybody drives past here. It's a very busy intersection, so it's great for what we wanted to do, and people feel free to pull off and look around and take their time to see what, what um, all the work that people have done invested. So going on to um, creating this thing was just a, a year-long process, developing a website with um, documentary of the whole year's efforts, um, traveling to conferences, trying to get participants through creating an email database, um, and then emailing newsletters out to those people, and then they tell their friends, and it's just word of mouth. And uh, we actually have 17 countries and 29 states involved. There's about 450 individual artists or people, art enthusiasts involved with uh, 2,500 students from the local city schools and then abroad. You know, some people express it differently. They sewed, they crocheted, they knitted, they used plastics, recycled plastics from their homes, they used uh, bottle labels, plastic bags, any, any type of materials that they could recycle. Um, because kind of the overall theme is recycle, reuse, and reclaim. And that's also what we're doing with the gas station in itself. It's been very exciting. I've never done anything like this. I've actually never worked in the political realm. I've never done a public art. Um, I've never done anything quite like this in my life. And it was just, it was amazing. The whole year was amazing. The reaction of uh, people coming out and bringing food during the installation for all the volunteers. Uh, there was a volunteer from Northern Ireland that came to help with the gas pumps. Um, so, and then from there on, just for several weeks after, a month after it was installed, you would see people here every day stopping and taking photos and um, hopefully not getting in a car wreck and, you know. Um, and then it reached the Associated Press. It just, it just blew up. It went all over the place. So it was really exciting to watch. I think it has definitely in the fact that people write me and email me their views, whether it's against or for, or what other ways that they think that, um, you know, that we could use energy in other different variations um, in different forms. So definitely in that, and then the, on the website, people can talk with each other and um, share these views and talk about, um, you know, how personally it affects them in their pocketbooks. And, um, you know, people get the chance to be interviewed, participants get the chance to be interviewed in magazines or shows like this and give their opinion and I can kind of step out of the picture. Um, so I think it just gives people springboard and gives them, a, you know, their own um, thing to be a part of to, to talk about. And it also talks about trying to get art out of the galleries and museums. And that's, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to kind of put it in the community around people who, you know, can't walk into a museum every day or are not a part of that culture. And this really puts it in their own 
um, space. I would say 94% of all the comments are very positive and uplifting and want to see the collaborative exist for years to come and cover other things. Um, you know, you get a small fraction and you always are. And see, that's, that's great though. I, I want that because if, if you don't have any negative and you have all positive, I think something's wrong, you know, and you're not reaching out. So, um, yeah, I think it's been very successful. We just actually went through the paperwork to finalize this into a non-for-profit to help raise more financial support for the years to come. And as, as I see it now, it looks like it'll run for several years. And, um, you know, who knows what, what else we'll cover. Um, I was thinking the next one would be all plastics um, instead of fibers. Um, it's great water resistant that way. <laughs> um, but uh, we thought, you know, covering um, abandoned airplanes um, and junkyard airplanes in Tucson, Arizona, to smokestacks, to uh, barns, to houses, um, and then covering those political industries um, as, as we see fit and uh, trying to get a uh, forum out of that. Hopefully when we take all this down with all the attention this has gotten, uh, something will become of this. I'm hoping maybe it'll become a nice bus stop or a grass, you know, grass area, some kind of a small park where people can sit. Welcome back. Now we go to Improve Your World correspondent Dave White, who leads a discussion with SUNY ESF student and faculty about Marsh's project and how the world of art can have a greater impact on the world around us. Let me begin by introducing our panel. Professor Mark Meisner with a PhD in Environmental Studies who teaches nature and popular culture mass media and environmental affairs, and environmental thought and ethics, among other courses. And uh, joining us, a student of his, Caroline Massa, uh, who's majoring in environmental studies, a senior, right? and from uh, Fayetteville, New York. So thank you both for joining me. I appreciate that. The topic of conversation, art and environment. And our focal point is the fabric gas station. So let's begin with that. Uh, Caroline, just in general, what did you think of that piece of art? I thought it was really amazing. Um, it took me a while to get by it because I don't drive often, but um, when I did see it, I loved how bright and colorful it was and how it really drew a lot of attention to it and um, made something that was pretty awful, the abandoned gas station, something attractive to look at. Good. Mark, how about you, your impression? Yeah, I was, uh, I was very excited when I heard about it. It's right in my neighborhood, and that gas station is ugly. And it's, it's really a blight in the neighborhood. And so when I heard that an artist was wrapping it in fabric, I'm like, wow, that sounds pretty cool. And so um, then I went over um, one of my morning walks and checked it out, and I was amazed just by the sort of audacity of it to take a whole building like that and wrap it in fabric. That impressed me right off the start. So I thought it was it was neat from the point of view of bringing a little beauty uh, in place of the ugliness that was there. Uh, I liked the, the sheer scale of it. Um, and then when I got to know a little bit more about it, uh, you know, I went to the website and realized that Jennifer had collaborated with people from all over the world, with local school kids and other artists. And so I really liked that sort of collaboration. What a, uh, uh, did you go over there and take an up close look at it? Or what was the? Were you surprised at uh, some of the, the the detail that was involved in, uh, in in putting that together? Yeah, I was really impressed with especially some of the younger um, people's work. How they had definitely put a lot of time and energy uh, and emotion into their work, and there were some really cool uh, crocheting and. Uh, use some recycled materials and that you would have to have thrown away otherwise, but they're made into art. And I really liked how uh, it was people from all over the world, and because the problem of petroleum dependence affects everyone, so it's really amazing how she had everyone work together. Well, it makes some people richer and some people poorer. <laughs> the interesting thing I thought was uh, uh, even got into decorating the gas pumps. 
I mean, uh, that, that kind of that kind of detail, yeah. the the hose handles and, 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 and everything like that. Great planning uh, on the part of the artist Jennifer Marshall I mean, to work that all out and to organize it all and to, to really be kind of a facilitator for all these people to express their feelings, thoughts, ideas about the you know, this, this issue of oil dependency. Let's let's let, let's take that as a jumping off point and say you know. This gave a whole host of people from a wide variety of, of countries and locations an opportunity to vent uh, about oil in one way or another. Um, so I guess the art served a definite purpose in that direction. Getting people involved. Is, is, I mean, agree, disagree? I mean, is it? Definitely. Like, because it affected people that wouldn't normally have seen it because you have to drive by there often to go to PNC or go to any of those markets. And so it kind of involved people that normally would have ignored the issue. And that's the great thing about art is that it's easy to see and bring people in. What I was, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna just add to, to what Carolyn said. A lot of art, you know, is, is the artist working in their studio with their own idea of what they want to say or what they want to create. And um, this is very different from that. This is the artist has a general idea, but lets the details get worked out in this collaborative process, inviting anybody. I mean, if I had known about it ahead of time, which unfortunately I didn't, I might have made up a, a panel and sent it to her with my own panel. I can't imagine you as a quilter. I'm uh, not <laughs> quilting, absolutely not. I probably would have done some kind of uh, you know, cut and paste applique kind of thing or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just, well, that's and, and, and that's the, the, the question I was trying to phrase there, is that this idea, uh, number one, you know, involved people in participating in, 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 the, in the project. And it gave them a chance to, uh, or to feel it gave them a chance for individual expression. Who can argue with that? <laughs> right? <laughs> that, that's what one of the things that's great about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you get, in that sense, different voices come out in, in the different panels. And some of them are subtle and some of them are pretty blunt, you know, um, the things that, that people did. But you get a, a range of voices and a range of perspectives in that one piece, which is kind of neat because art shouldn't do that. On the other side of it, and this you referenced earlier, Caroline, was uh, uh, people just driving by had to take notice. It was just colorful. Um, and, uh, but you know, what Jennifer intended in that was not people just take notice, but also think seriously uh, uh, about the problem that petroleum poses. Um, do you think the symbolism that she was striving for, do you think that worked? Um, yeah, I think that it's definitely a strive in the right direction. Um, it definitely opened some people's eyes up to the issue and people, not, not too many people, but a lot of people stopped and looked at the individual panels and she had information about it um, on a separate uh, billboard sort of thing and so I think she grabbed people's attention, brought them in and they read what, what, she, what people had done and what the point of her project was. So I think she did a really good job. And, and you know, in the age of the internet, you can always put up a website and she put up a good website with close-ups of a lot of the panels and more information and, and links and so that just kind of adds to it so that was, that was I think another important component of the, the whole outreach thing. Um, it, you know she originally intended it as this idea of expressing this dependence on oil um, but you get a lot of other dimensions of that coming out uh, in, the, in the panels themselves. Um, you know for some people it's very strong of ethical notions of the harm that our dependence on oil is doing to people in other countries, in Nigeria, um, environmental harms, uh, also just sort of the sheer cost of things. So a lot of different, as I said, a lot of different ideas come out of that. Do you think something like that changes people's minds? Hmm. Well, it's pretty hard to say that any one thing changes people's minds because. People go through the day, they have lots of influences on them. I think the job of the artist is to ask questions and to you know, provoke people to think about things that maybe they haven't thought about or 
or maybe they haven't thought about in a certain way. Um, and you know, most of the, the popular discussions about oil dependency in the media um, are pretty much focused on economics. And the nice thing about this is that it brings out the ethical uh, questions, uh, highlights them. You were, you were you were nodding his head, your head while he was saying yeah, that. I think it's not going to change someone's uh, view immediately, most likely. I mean, maybe it did for someone, but I think it's more of a bringing it to the forefront of what they're thinking about, and then if they hear something else about it, then they're more likely to listen and understand. And then eventually, the way they're thinking about oil dependency and its issues is they're going to, it's more likely that they're going to learn about it and change that way they're thinking, if, they, if it's everywhere visible. Do you think that uh, the stark contrast of, of the, the empty, abandoned gas station suddenly full of life and, and color makes a, makes a big impression? Um, yeah, it's going to draw attention to it if, there's, if it's been transformed into this piece of artwork with tons of colors. Right now, I drove by it and it's just chipping paint, it's white, it's awful. I think that one of the most interesting things about it was the stark difference between the bright colors and the fabric and then the sign with the price of the uh, oil on it, the petroleum on it, and um, it was really interesting because it made that pop out because it was so different from the rest of the colorful fabric. So, was I was disappointed when I heard that she was taking it down. I was hoping it was going to be like a permanent installation because it's, it was beautiful. I mean, the ugliness that's there, that was there before, that's back there now, as I said, I live in the area, I have to go buy it all the time. I can't wait till they tear that thing down <laughs> and get rid of it. So, so yeah, I mean, just, just that contrast got people's attention, and the scale of it got people's attention. It wasn't like she just wrapped the gas pump, which would have been cool, but the whole thing was in a very detailed way. Wasn't the gas station already sending a message, though, um, subtly perhaps, but the sign that's up out in front gives the gasoline price a uh, uh, $1.36 a gallon when that gasoline station shut down. And now we're paying three fifty to $4 a gallon. Doesn't that give a message that the, the oil dependency uh, presents a problem for all of us? Or is that not yeah, a sure. strong? I mean, sure it does. I mean, nobody wants to pay more. It's a double-edged sword. Nobody wants to pay more for their gas, but as gas prices go up, people tend to drive less and they conserve, and that's probably a good thing. It's a good thing for the planet. It's a good thing for global warming. It's certainly not the answer. $5, $10 gas, a gallon gas, is still not going to solve the problem, for example, of global warming. Um, it's bigger. It's deeper than that. And so the price is very telling. It's not but a again, whole story, and and you know, like I said, most of the discussions in the media that we hear, you know, when we're talking about you know gas prices going up, and everybody's, you know, some people are suffering generally because of that. But the focus of the discussion becomes personal economics. It's not a question of, for example, ethics and responsibilities to future generations or to the rest of the planet or to people in other countries. Yes. And and so that's, I mean, that's where the artist can make a kind of an intervention. Uh, that you don't see regularly in the mainstream media. Did Did you have people, fellow students, commenting about about that uh, about the project? Um, a little bit. Uh, not that many students go over there because very few have cars, especially ESF. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the bicycle campus. Yes. <laughs> but everyone who had seen it, and it was definitely something that we discussed in classes. Um, really liked it and it brought some new energy to it because you can be creative in your messages about the environment with art and so I think that excited people so I think it was a good project in that, in that way. So you, would, do you think it helps or, or hurts efforts to, to try to find solutions to environmental problems? I think it helps tremendously uh, because it's making people, all different kinds of people, energetic about the environment and doing something about it in the way that they are able to contribute. She felt that she could contribute by, with her art, um, by opening up the doors to other people to express the way they feel and 
making it visible to everyone else, and I think that was a really good idea. So she, she felt efficacy in that way. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, something you mentioned earlier, you were disappointed when it came down. And I was thinking back to one of the things that Jennifer said, that is that she discovered something in doing this project, that fabric wasn't really the best yeah. thing to use. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It used a lot of waterproofing stuff on it, yeah, so a bit of an irony in that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, let me add to that, to that same question. I mean, I, yes. I agree with what, what Karen was saying. And I, and I think that we, another way to think about it is, is that um, to achieve sustainability, to, to s solve our environmental problems, to, to deal with these massive complex issues that we have, like climate change, uh, we need, you know, we need technology and we need good science and we need good policy, but more than anything, we need a shift in the way people think. Uh, it's going to require deep changes in our culture and our value systems if we're going to move to a place of sustainability. And so I think that the, you know, it's very helpful and, and artists who are engaging with the question of our relationship to the, to the natural environment are helping to ask those questions about well, what kind of values are we looking for, what are our values now, and how do we see ourselves in relation to the planet, and, and where does that shift need to take place. And so I think that's an important component of, of solving the problems, is the cultural change, the cultural shift, the and, shift in ethics and values. Uh, and an and artistic expression like this um, uh, helps people vent their particular frustrations with current situation, as in the contributing artist, mm -hmm. and then the the viewer um, sees um, the different possibilities. Uh, they see, hey, that could have been me. I could have done that. You know, I agree with that. Or, you know, mm -hmm. And maybe from one panel to the next. Yeah. Or uh, they were saying you, you find individual things in the panels that made you realize that this has an impact in an area that I really hadn't thought of. Exactly. Like, people say that rising gas prices hurts small, poor families, and but they don't realize that maybe it's affecting poor people in the way that it's the petroleum is bad for them, that they maybe petroleum shouldn't be used, maybe the prices, higher prices is not a totally horrible thing, because if people are using it less, then it won't have such a negative impact on other poor people. Poorly worded <laughs> sentence, but they. Do you think that um, this project um, and, and, yeah, is kind of leading people, or is it following people? Uh, is it leading an idea, or is it is is it creating an idea, or is it tapping into uh, ideas that already are developing? Let me see if I can make uh, my yeah, question better. I got you. Okay. So, <laughs> I, think that, uh, I think that the, the ideas are out there, uh, but they're not out there in the mainstream. Uh, they're not out there in the popular discussion. They existed before. Jennifer has found a different way to express them. And well, that's great. I mean, to find a different way to reach a different audience in a beautiful, creative kind of way maybe makes those ideas more accessible, more provocative, and new to people who have been exposed to So, so I'm, yes, no. Okay. Yes, no. no. Well, well, let me try to rephrase the, the, the question to you. Does, do you think art in general, uh, with this project as an example, uh, leads or follows? Is it, is it you know, following, you know, kind of just giving voice to what people already think, mm -hmm. or is it creating new thoughts? I think it's both. Uh, I, I believe that it's following in the way that she collaborated, I collaborated the way it affected everyone, the things that they were thinking. And it wouldn't have been allowed to be put there if other people didn't already have these thoughts in their minds. And it was a leader because there's people out there who didn't think about it, and it was giving voice to those things. And uh, she, the more people are exposed to something, the more they accept it, the more they're thinking about it, the more they're likely that something's going to be done about it. Is that that's a role for art, isn't it? Yeah. To try to push the envelope a little bit. Absolutely. <clears throat> Artists have always attempted to push the envelope. 
they're sometimes on the bleeding edge or the leading edge, uh, sometimes right behind it, but always trying to ask those questions that are at the edge. I said because the artist just needs, craves attention. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Lots of people crave attention. It's not just artists. Mm -hmm. And do it in different and, and, and do it in different ways. Right. Sports stars, celebrities, TV hosts. <laughs> 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 Are there other kinds of things like this that you can think of uh, that have that you know that are helping to uh, shape the evolution of our feelings towards uh, sustainability and petroleum and fossil products and that sort of thing? Other kinds of art. Other kinds of art. Yeah. Projects. Yeah. Or was this one of the reasons that this received so much attention is because it was so truly unique? I think for a, on a local basis, it's pretty unique. Um, there hasn't been a lot of art, ecological art, in the area, but there's certainly uh, around the world and in the U.S. There's a lot of it going on. I can't think of a specific example right now, but it definitely is. And, um, things like uh, gardens and permaculture, people make art forms out of those things, sort of things, definitely. So. Yeah, nothing jumps to mind for me locally uh, that's specifically about oil dependency. And of course, we have the Stone Quarry Art Park out near Casanova that has a number of pieces that um, raise the question of our relationship to the planet, things made out of newspapers, and sort of other kinds of pieces set in that natural setting. So the sort of art in nature, art nature kind of stuff, uh, there's more of that, that that comes to mind. There's a, there's one, whenever I think of, of questions of sort of our relationship to the environment and art, now this isn't an oil thing, but there's, there's this Russian performance artist, and he's, his name is Oleg Kulik, and he's uh, well known internationally, and he's quite a crazy man, because he'll do things like, uh, he had one exhibition in New York City, uh, where he, arrived at JFK by air, he was loaded into a van, he took off all his clothes and put on a dog collar, and he spent a week living as a dog in a kind of caged room at an art gallery, um, eating out of dog bowls, uh, barking, even biting people who put their hands into the cage. And he spent a whole week doing that, and then he got in the van and went home to Russia. So he spent sort of talking about, you know, well, you know, what are we in relation to animals? What are the animals to us? What does that mean? And what are the connections and disconnections? And asking all those kinds of questions. So there are people doing some pretty fun, interesting stuff. De <laughs> definitely the, the subject for a future program. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> I want to thank you both for, for participating. It was very, very good. Uh, it, the, uh, joining me today, Professor Mark Meisner and uh, Caroline Massa. Thanks. Well, that's all for this edition of Improve Your World with SUNY ESF. I hope you enjoyed your time with us, and you'll join us again next time.